Thank you, Mr. Tang. There's actually a question on Zoom um, by Jenny, and she asked, how, can you share how can we start farming in schools? Oh, in school, well, you, you have to have, you have to go there to see the, the site first. And then you have to see the locations because school, school grounds, there are buildings and buildings will create shade. And, and, and green plants, usually we need a lot of sun, right? So the sun path, the, uh, the blocking by the, by the buildings, and then you have to check the soil, you have to check the surrounding, you have to check the vegetations already there. And if nearby there is some um, nature, some nature area, like parks or even near to a forest, that would be good because the school garden I'm farming in now is quite near to the, to the Cle uh, Clementi Forest, I think, Green Corridor. So the garden is benefiting a lot from that. Yes, especially now uh, there's less traffic, uh, less machine noise. So I get more wild, uh, urban wildlife coming, coming to the garden. I see more birds, more insects and so on. And one more thing is that uh, wow, well, you have to work closely with the school management because well, any green spaces, they would engage uh, workers, contractor workers to mow the grass, to apply pesticides, and then mosquito foggings. You have to work with all these people so that they would avoid fogging or applying pesticides to, your, to the garden. Yeah, I, I have a lot of experience to share on this. Like, Fogging, I have been trying so hard to ask them not, not to fog near their garden area. Uh, before I did that, after they fog, I, I went, actually went to check. I see dead bodies of uh, dragonflies and beetles on the grass. So they are killing all these insects before they kill any mosquitoes. Yes. So which are the questions to... Um, Huni has a question. She asks, how do you think we can meet the 30 by 30 goal? Oh, wow. Well, I, I don't know. Well, 30 by 30 goal, the 30% 30 of, the, of the vegetables and of the food that we eat, well, uh, well they have the in, industrial farming happening in the uh, Lim Chugang area. So that would maybe they, they would supply the bulk of this 30%. And then I was hoping that maybe up to 10, up to 10% by uh, people growing food in other areas, like public green spaces. So if they open up more green spaces for, for interested parties to grow food using natural means, that will be good, right? Because what I see is that the, the larger scale farms here, they, they are more like uh, industrial farming. Uh, they use a lot of input, a lot of materials, a lot of footprint, plastic footprint, carbon footprint, and so on. So because their goal is just uh, yield by weight. Whereas for for natural farming, we don't just go for yield, we also go for the quality of the, of the vegetables. What, I, just now I talked about the phytonutrients. We go for the phytonutrients. Yes. So, so we can help. We can uh, supplement, uh, supplement the, 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 the 30 by 30 vision, but but the bulk will, will be produced by, uh, by those industrial uh, farming. But I hope that more and there will be many more small scale natural farms all around Singapore. That's, is, that is what I want to see. Awesome. 
Now we have one more question on the pigeonhole by Ting Ting. She asks, um, she wonders how it might be possible for us to incorporate growing food as part of the curriculum in our primary schools. Yeah, I think this is a very good idea because I have seen some good examples, uh, like like from uh, Japan especially. Yes. So, and and uh, when I was when I am gardening, farming in the school garden, and the classroom is just about 20 meters from the garden, and sometimes I could, I could hear the teacher teach um, lessons on, on the environment, geography, and biology. So, so I was thinking to myself that here, just outside the classroom, we have a garden. You can see the real thing. You can see the uh, the, the insects, you can see the flowers. You have, they, I, once there was a lesson on biology, they, the teacher mentioned about uh, male flowers, female flowers, they look at the PowerPoint and so on. I was thinking, hey, come out here. I have male flowers and female flowers in the garden. You can, you can see and, and insects are pollinating them and so on. So, so if you have gardens in, in a school, there will be a lot of opportunities. So gardens can be a living classroom, a classroom without walls, without ceilings. And, uh, and, and actually some teachers are already doing this. They, they are bringing their students out from the, class, uh, from the classroom into the garden. But some teachers are very concerned. They say, oh, would there be uh, uh, mosquitoes? Your grass so long in the garden uh, is not tidy. So they are afraid of the insects and animals there. So we, we need to change the mindset of many people. That, that, that the insects that we see, most of them are good. They are beneficial to us. Okay, we so have about think, yeah, four more minutes right? left. Yeah, we have about four more minutes left. So if anyone else has any questions, you can feel free to drop it in the chat. For those who are unaware, Mr. Tang is actually our lead grower at the Biodiverse Edible Garden at JCP, Jurong, Jurong Central Park. Yeah, so JCP Garden, um, that garden is actually an initiative started by Foodscape Collective and also with like the residents around JCP. Yeah, so it's really um, like, an experiment, like an experiment and it has been amazing to see how it has grown over the last few months. Yeah, maybe Mr. Tang, you want to share a bit about JCP? Oh, yes. Uh, one more advantage of growing food is that um, we use a lot of uh, uh, kitchen scraps, food waste and so on. Like uh, the garden in the school I'm helping in now, the size is about uh, one basketball court and I estimate that I can take in about 50 kg of food scraps every day. So, and these food scraps will be returned to soil to, to, uh, to feed the soil organisms. And some of this, you know, food is carbon, all right? There's a lot of carbon in food. And uh, so the food waste, the food scraps, if we just burn it, it will become CO2 again in the, in the air, all right? So, so it's not helping. So if we return to soil, some of the carbon can remain in the soil. And uh, so just imagine a small garden of that size, I can take in 50 kg of food scraps every day. Imagine that if there are 1,000 of these small gardens all around Singapore, we can help to reduce a lot of uh, food waste being sent to the incinerator, all right? So right now I have a problem because school is closed. I don't get so much uh, uh, food scraps from the school canteen stalls. So, so every day I have to bring my own kitchen waste to the garden. And also Karina, Choi Fan Yu, you remember Karina, right? Yeah. 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 So she still takes her uh, food, kitchen waste to the garden and she can handle it herself. I don't need to be there. So anytime she, she wants, she can just take her kitchen waste to the garden and oh, bury it nice. in, the, in the compost pit. 
And also Ching. right now, because there are no teachers, no students in the uh, in school, and the garden is still producing uh, food for me, for us. So I have to keep asking Karina, every time she goes, please harvest some home to eat. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So now, because after growing food myself for so many years, I can taste the difference between the food that I grow and the food that I buy. Yeah, I, I, I am more sensitive, sensitive to the taste of food, especially uh, vegetables and fruits. I'm more sensitive. I think, Thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, I, I was just looking at the time and it's now okay. six o'clock. Uh, so thank you, Mr. Tang, so much for your wonderful sharing. Um, I think Mr. Tang is really a li living example of how we can increase our handprints um, mm. in this planet. Yeah, rather than decreasing, just decreasing our footprints. Yeah. Yes. Okay, last but so not least. Many people mm -hmm. can do it, increasing our handprint through growing food, through farming. That would help pulling excess carbon from the air and store it into the soil. When carbon is in the soil existing as humus, it will make the soil fertile. And this is what we need to, to do. Right? If, if this happens all around the world, we still have hope. Although the CO2 level is still going up, today is 416, still going up. Yeah, so we need not only to flatten the curve, we need to crush it back to maybe 300. Yeah. Yeah, really so, agree about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, last but not least, I think I'll just make a quick mention about Collective Wednesday. So Collective Wednesday is actually an opportunity for people to come on to um, do a short sharing so it can be anything from personal sharing um, to knowledge that you have about food and sustainability so like what Mr. Tang has shared so if you guys um, if any one of you would be interested to share feel free to contact um, Foodscape Collective via Facebook and we can arrange something from there yeah with that I think we can uh, we have come to the end of today's session